This is a story about a country digging its way to prosperity. Central Ivory Coast is a rich agricultural landscape. Life here revolves around crops. Most importantly, cocoa. Ivory Coast has the world's largest cocoa crop, and it starts in places like this, the village of Yoho, where John Koasayo is a cocoa farmer. Profit margins for cocoa are notoriously thin. Mr. Koasayo gets less than $10 for a sack like this. These days, Mr. Koasayo supplements his income by dealing in gold. For a long time, mining was seen as a dirty alternative to the wholesome, traditional farming lifestyle. But that's changing. Ivory Coast is in the midst of a gold rush. The country boasts some of the richest gold mining potential in Africa. It's part of a broader mining boom across the African continent, propelled by high mineral prices and struggling crops. Hundreds of thousands of people are leaving agriculture behind to pursue a life in the mines. Five minutes down the road from Mr. Koasayo's village, hidden in the bush, former farmers are operating a bustling, ad hoc mining enterprise. Mr. Koasayo makes cash as a middleman between the miners Bonjour, and foreign buyers. Word of profitable mining sites travels quickly, and before long, a few tunnels evolve into a self-sufficient mining camp like this. The work is dirty and dangerous, with open shafts just steps away from living quarters. About half a million people are thought to be involved in artisanal mining in the country, spread out across more than 150 sites like this. It's not the first time that artisanal and small-scale mining has helped develop agricultural economies. In the 19th century, mining helped establish railroad and banking systems that transformed the economies of countries like America, Australia and South Africa. But that shift can come with consequences. An hour down the road in the gold rush town of Nisoko, the environmental and social costs of Ivory Coast's gold mining boom are becoming apparent. Here, petrol fumes mingle with rumors of a treasure there for the taking. A year ago, this was a tiny forest village. Now it's a boom town, several thousand strong. We are two here, these are the of cacao, the palmiers. The locals call it Abidjan 2 because its dense population and frenetic energy remind them of the country's biggest city. La, la population s'est accroît du coup comme Abidjan et l'économie aussi a été devenue du coup comme à Abidjan où tout le monde gagnait de l'argent, tout le monde gagne maintenant de l'argent. This massive open pit is the biggest mine in Nisoko. Hundreds of people work in tandem to dig out gold ore. Considering the giant scale of the pit, the final product seems meager. Voilà, il enlève un petit grain, un petit grain d'or. Toxic mercury is used to aggregate the gold. Voilà. Et vous voyez, ça ce sont des mercures. Les mercures. And then drained into the soil. This piece of gold is worth about $10. It is dangerous, dirty work. This pit is illegal, and heavily armed security guards patrol it. Shortly after arriving, our team was prevented from filming and briefly detained. The Ivorian government has since shut this site down. Local officials worry that because the mine operates under the radar and isn't taxed, the wealth generated here isn't being invested back into the community. Roger Tape is the chief of Greg Bay, the closest sizable village. The way it's being done right now, no, 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 we don't get any profit from it. Simply the miners get what they can get. The village itself does not get anything from gold mining. Mr. Tape thinks revenue from mines like this should go toward public projects like schools, roads and hospitals. Our villages need a lot of things. Water, current water, we don't have it. They could also get electricity, for example. They could um, have schools built and, um, and hospitals also built. Then this would be profitable to the population. Back in Yoho, cocoa is still a way of life. 
Federal officials acknowledge that mining can be a vital tool to fight poverty in rural places like this. But they have been slow to establish a legitimate legal structure for it, leaving the door open to labor and environmental abuses. If mining is going to be a vehicle for development in Ivory Coast, the country's industry has a long road ahead. <laughs>